Lord God, for the power of the Holy Spirit come upon me right now. Lord God, thank you for the anointing. And I ask, Lord God, that you'd edify and build the people up today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. This, uh, this miracle happened in, uh, over in Uganda. I have seen thousands and thousands of people healed like this. I need to get a new cameraman, though. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, when I first came into the church, I had just gotten, I'd just gotten set free from alcoholism. And, uh, you know, I, 30 years ago I was sitting in a bar telling dirty jokes and stuff. And uh, since then I've been to Africa four times, I've been to the Philippines 30 times, I've been to India and Thailand and Nepal, and I've, I've seen some amazing, amazing things. And it's so amazing that God could take somebody like me, wash me in the blood of Jesus Christ, yeah. fill me with the Holy Spirit, and, and use me for His glory. Amen? Amen. He is so amazing. Amen. It's so easy to get a miracle from God. It's so easy. I've seen, I've seen thousands of miracles. We have this mindset in America that it's something difficult. If it was something difficult, I would never be able to do it. It's not difficult. It's very easy. Amen. I want to I share with you today about the working of miracles. Amen. Because we are entering, entering into a period of time when God is about to pour out his spirit in the earth. And people need to have a mindset to know and understand who they are and what they have and what they can do in Jesus Christ. Amen. Because we are about to see a, a, an overflow, an outpouring of miracles in the earth. And God is looking for people that he can use. Yeah, I want to read a scripture out of uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, in verse 10, it says... And to another, the working of miracles, to another, prophecy, to another, discerning of spirits, to another, the different kinds of tongue, to another, the interpretation of tongues. Now, this is talking about the gifts of the Spirit. And it says in verse 11, But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. The Holy Spirit operates the gifts of the Spirit as the Spirit wills. I heard Brother Hagen say this one time. He said, any of the gifts of the Spirit that you see operating by the Holy Spirit, all of these can be operated by faith. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, we, we know this when we, when we look at what Jesus said over in John chapter 14 and verse 12. How many of you believe that Jesus is the truth? Yeah. Yeah. In John chapter 14 and verse 12, Jesus said, Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, will he do also, and greater works than these will he do, because I go to the Father. Now Jesus said, most assuredly. When, when Jesus says, most assuredly, you can take it to the bank. It's a fact. It is the truth. It's a spiritual truth. And he said, the works that I do shall you do also, and greater works than these will you do, because I go to the Father. He went to the Father and he sent down the Holy Spirit. And as Pastor David was saying, that same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in us. Yes. We are born of God. God lives on the inside of us. We are the temple of God and the Holy Spirit of God lives on the inside of us. That same miracle working power that was in Jesus is in all of us. Yes. Hallelujah. And we can tap into that miracle working power by faith. Jesus is teaching us here that if we believe in him, we can do the same works that he did and greater works than these. Yes. This is what Jesus is saying. Sure. This is not a doctrine in a lot of churches, but this is truth. Jesus is the truth. Amen. So, and, and another thing that I have discovered that is so amazing, in Mark chapter 9, in Mark chapter 9, and start with verse 38. Now John answered saying, Teacher, we saw someone who does not follow us casting out demons in your name, 
and we forbade him because he does not follow us. But Jesus said, do not forbid him, for no one who works a miracle in my name can soon afterward speak evil of me. Here's a man, he's not even saved. He's not even born again. He doesn't even have the Holy Spirit living in him. And he's casting out devils. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Yes. He must have saw somebody, some of Jesus' disciples, casting out devils in the name of Jesus. Heard Peter say, in the name of Jesus, come out of him. So he looked at this and said, you know what? It's the name of Jesus. I can do that too. Yeah, and here's a here's two there's two revelations in this portion of scripture. One is that it, it's the name of Jesus that does the miracles. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the name of Jesus. And the other miracle is this, or the other revelation is this. Work casting out a devil is a working a miracle. That's what it says here. That's what Jesus said. For no one who works a miracle in my name can soon afterwards speak evil of me. So here's a man, he's not even born again, he's not even saved, and he's found out that the, the authority that's in the name of Jesus, and he's casting out devils. And Jesus did get upset. Jesus said, go for it, you know. The, pro the guy probably, you know, he probably got saved after Jesus rose from the dead. Amen. In, in this, uh, this short video clip showed you this man getting healed in Africa. It was not the gifts of the Spirit. I prayed the prayer of faith over this man. And then by faith I tried to get him to act on it, to walk and to move and to do something. And him acting on his faith and me praying in faith and us two agreeing in prayer, a miracle took place. And to me a miracle is anything where the power of God the supernatural power of God comes into a natural situation and changes it. I have seen some amazing things. I, I, I pray for this one man. He had a, he had a, broke, a broken bone in his foot. And he come hopping up in the prayer line. So I prayed over him and then uh, nothing happened. So I told him, jump up in the air and come down on that foot. And he looks at me like, really? I said, do it. And he jumped up in the air, and I'm telling you what, God healed him before his foot touched the floor. Yeah. And this man, he just got born again. So he wasn't, he wasn't some faith-filled person, you know. He was just, just a baby Christian, just got born again. And uh, on, by faith, he jumped up in the air, and the miracle took place. It wasn't the working of miracles. I've seen that. I've, I've seen that, uh, the working of miracles happen a lot of times. And that was not, this was the prayer of faith, praying for him. Having faith in the name of Jesus. If you have faith in the name of Jesus, uh, you can see miracles happen. And then also, let's go over to Acts chapter 3, verse 16. And Pastor David was talking about this scripture the other day. Here's a story about the man at the gate called Beautiful, and he's a paralyzed man sitting there begging. And uh, Peter comes up and says, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And so he gets healed. So then in verse 16 he says, he's, and his name, the name of Jesus, and through faith in that name, has this man, has made this man strong whom you see and know. Yes, the faith which comes through him, the faith that comes through Jesus, has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. And then you go back over into chapter 4, you know, the religious leaders heard about what was going on. And they, they noticed this miracle. And so then uh, in verse 7 it says, And when they had set them in the midst, they asked him, By what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders of Israel, If we this day are judged for the good deed done this helpless man, by what means has been made well. Let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead by him, this man stands here before you whole. 
It's the name of Jesus and faith in that name that makes miracles happen. You can make miracles happen if you have faith in Jesus and faith in his name. Mm -hmm. Over in, uh, let's go to uh, 1 John chapter 3 and verse 23. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 23 says this. And this is his commandment. That we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he has given us commandment. Here he commands us to believe on the name of Jesus. It's a commandment. Hallelujah. Amen. I, when I was, I was up in Nepal, there was a 12-year-old a, a 12, 12 girl came up in the prayer line. She's deaf and dumb. And uh, I laid hands on her, and I cast a deaf and dumb spirit out of her. And I put the microphone up to her, up to her mouth, and I said, Okay, sweetheart, I said, say Jesus. She had never spoken a word in her life. Not one word in her life. And she said, hey, Sue. And that's how they say it in the Nepalese language. Hey, Sue. And all of the Hindu people heard it. All of the Hindu people heard her speak. And they all knew this little girl. Because we, we did a crusade right in the neighborhood there. And uh, the pastor was telling me uh, later, he, he emailed me. And he told me that this, this pastor had just started a little church there. And we held that meeting. And, and I, I think over 100, maybe 200 people got healed that day. And all these Hindu people seen it. And most of the people that got healed were Hindu people. But this miracle that happened, it was not the gifts of the Spirit operating. It was me using the name of Jesus to cast this Spirit out of this girl. Any Christian can do that. Yeah, that's right. If you have faith in Jesus and faith in his name, any Christian can cast out devils. Mm -hmm. But this pastor was so excited because his church just exploded. He just, he just planted that church. He, he only had 20 members or so. He, and the, the next day, they had their service on the next afternoon. And the, the place was packed. And, and the pastor told me the service lasted for four hours. Wow. It was all people giving their testimonies. Wow. Yeah. And then the, and the girl that was healed... Her father owned the building that the pastor was leasing. And so all of the Hindu, all those Hindu people got saved. Oh. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus was always moved with compassion. Always was moved with compassion, trying to help people. And you know, one time I was, I was up in the northern Philippines, and I was praying for the sick. And all of a sudden, uh, I went to pray for this lady. She had um, two or three physical problems. I don't remember what was wrong with her. But um, I, w I laid hands on her, and I could feel this demon bouncing off my hands. I could just feel this thing bouncing off in inside of me. So I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, you come out of her right now. And then the pastor, the pastor walks up to me, and he whispers in my ear, and he says, she's the El Valario. She's the witch doctor. Oh. Yeah, she was the head witch doctor that whole area. And I said, uh, well, she just said the sinner's prayer, didn't she? He said, yeah. I said, well, she's not a witch doctor anymore. <laughs> so she got totally delivered from the devil. She got healed and set free and praise God. Hallelujah. I've seen many, many crippled children get healed. It's so easy to get crippled children healed. I'm telling you, it's the easiest thing in the world you've ever done. The, person, the parent's standing there holding the child. You just go up and you break the power of the devil in Jesus' name. Yeah. And then you lay your hands on that child's legs and you command life and them, command them to work. And then you tell them, put the child down and walk them. And if that parent has the faith to put that child down, that child's going to walk. Amen. I've seen that happen so many times in, in the Philippines and India and Nepal and Africa. Many, many times. It's the easiest thing in the world to get a crippled child healed. And it's so glorious. It's so fun. <laughs> you know, if you don't enjoy being a Christian, you haven't jumped into the river yet. <laughs> you, 
You gotta just jump right in, go all the way. Go all the way with Jesus. Read these words and believe them and act on them. Praise God. I'll tell you what, He is a miracle working God. Oh, there was a, here's a good illustration. There was one lady, old lady in this meeting. She had, uh, she came up in the prayer line and I asked her, I said, uh, what do you need prayer for? She said, when I came here, I was blind, but God opened this one eye. Wow. Hallelujah. Uh, but she said, um, and I said, well, listen, let's pray and believe God to open up that other eye. She said, okay. So I laid my hands on her and God opened the other eye. Now see, see here's the difference. One of them was the gifts of the Spirit, which I had nothing to do with. And the other one was the prayer of faith. You see the illustration here? So whatever, you can, whatever God does through the, the gifts of the Spirit, you can do through faith. Amen. If you believe in Jesus and believe in his name. Yeah. That's how miracles happen. That's what Paul said in, in Acts chapter 3, in Acts chapter 4. He said, it's the name of Jesus and faith in that name that has made this man whole. Hallelujah. In Philippians chapter uh, 2, in verse 8, the Bible says, And being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross, Therefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven and those on earth and those under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Because he was obedient unto death, even the death of the cross, God has highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every name. Amen. 